San Diego's downsized biotech industry is inventing a much leaner virtual business model. An executive who knows how it works is Gail Naughton. She is a chairman and CEO of San Diego-based Histogen. San Diego Biotechnology Connection caught up with Naughton at her company's headquarters. She described how the biotech business model here is different from China's and how American biotech companies can do business there. The traditional model for biotech since the 1980s has been to be able to go and get substantial venture funding followed by an early IPO. Uh, that's not the case anymore. In addition, large pharma, who used to go and fund biotech at an early stage with relatively large upfronts and milestones, is really moving away from that as well. And so we are looking at ways of being able to fund these early projects without the large VC funds, without the IPOs in the short term, and without big pharma. So more and more is looking to being able to have government funding, whether here or abroad, to bring the early and exciting projects forward. Histogen really has developed its uh, product straight through phase one. We're studying, uh, starting a phase one, two very shortly with very few people, only 22 full-time people in the company. We use a clinical research organization to do the uh, majority of clinical monitoring. We've done only small-scale GMP manufacturing and are postponing our large scale-up of the manufacturing until we know that we have successful phase two data. We've outsourced all of our preclinical work and so we really are looking at the outsourcing model as being able to go and bring us into the phase three studies. So Asia is really trying to catch up with the U.S. in terms of innovation, biotech, as well as life science products. And they're doing this predominantly by government-funded research. And so the three models that are both spoken of the most are the Korean model, in which the government has invested hundreds of millions of dollars for regenerative medicine and stem cell work. There, it's more bricks and mortar than the actual research funding. So they went and they built large laboratories and, and they really don't even have the scientists and the clinicians to man them. Um, Korea, however, is addressing some of this issue by being able to go and have IPO actually occur at an early biotech stage. So they have raised a number of venture funds who are funding the early projects, trying to go and in-license products from elsewhere in the world as well, and then having an early exit strategy for those who invested the VC money so that they can go public on the Korean market, which does not preclude them from going public at a later date in the US or in Europe. Singapore has really done an amazing job in bringing innovation to their country. The government itself has funded a life science center called Biopolis, and they went and recruited top scientists from all over the world who were leaders in their field and who had a proven track record of innovation. The Biopolis Standalone Institute actually has everything you need from discovery through early clinical studies. They do all the preclinical work there, they have all the service laboratories there, and they really have formed a very effective think tank so that these top scientists can go and feed on one another and innovation is really cultivated. This is really a great model. In addition, the Economic Development Corporation in Singapore has played an active role in being able to find early investor monies for these new projects so that once an idea is conceived at Biopolis, there'll be the money there to take it forward into the preclinical trials and to the clinical trials as well. So Singapore has really been on the edge in Asia of being able to have this effective creativity innovation think tank. So China is really trying to catch up dramatically with life sciences and biotechnology. They really see that as a major piece of their economy moving forward. But they don't have a culture for innovation and for really bringing any kind of novel life science products forward. So what they did was study what was working in the United States and elsewhere in the world and realized that the good model for them would be able to be go and bring all of the scientists and clinicians within the same campus and provide a very friendly, uh, atmosphere to be able to go and foster innovation. 
they went and they got the buy-in from the National Academy of Sciences in China, as well as all the national engineering bureaus. So you have all of the experts in the country endorsing this model. They are building out a campus in three phases. They've just started phase two, in which they're offering incubator space to small and large companies to be able to go and create these new ideas and bring them to the clinical stage. This campus is very interesting because they have housing on this campus, they have all kind of recreation facilities, and they have recently finished Peking Hospital. So you're going to be able to have a key clinical center there too. So you, from, you have everything from genome research services to all the laboratory services, preclinical, and now clinical trials on the same campus, and you don't even have to take a bus to go home. You're living on the same campus as well. So they really are creating a city. If you want, they're trying to create a mini San Diego all within the center of Beijing in order to go and force this innovation. Well, for small companies, it's going to be impossible to go and actually have control of the IP themselves. Genzyme is a very large company. They can go and have the resources to be able to go and protect their IP. But I think short term, the real solution is for smaller companies, US-based and others, to partner with major companies in China because those companies will have a vested interest to put the money behind preserving the IP so that they can go and have the license to the product and have a proprietary edge. What my take home is, is that we need more federal funding, or at least not a reduction in federal funding, so that we can go and foster and fund more of this translational medicine, not just the early on research, but be able to go and have the environment and the funding to take it into the preclinical and early clinical stages, where it then, if successful, will have a better chance to be able to get funded through large pharmaceuticals or the venture world.